Welcome into this Wednesday edition of the Oxford Exxon Podcast. Chase Parman, Neil McGrady, Clark Ford Studio on a uh, raining, rainy morning in Oxford. I think rainy most of the uh, the day today. Yes, still in the sixties though. Still kind of warm out, but uh, getting a little uh, getting a little shower. Today. We're in the enhanced tornado risk zone, not the severe, but the enhanced. Oh, the enhanced. Okay, so we have that going on. We have that going for us today as we uh, come to you. We'll discuss a uh, basketball postponement or what um, maybe you hope is a postponement and not a cancellation with the Ole Miss and uh, Florida. Florida, I think, was already in town, and they uh, had COVID issues inside the uh, the Gators program. So that game not happening today at 4 o'clock. So they made the trip. I, I don't know that for sure, but somebody – okay, look, I'm, I'm, I'm being that guy. It was it was on the message board, so it's true, right? 100%? Okay. okay. I, I don't, don't know. know. That's what I, I was told. Know. I haven't checked. I didn't ask, but – that did I, not appear to be. I became suspicious that something might be up when there was no media op before the first game. That's a good point. Yeah. There was no media op, and I was like, whoa, hmm, somebody might know something. And now you have, an, you, you have the whatever of, well, most of the media is in New Orleans, or a portion but, is. Well, the ones who are are idiots. Yeah. I mean, no offense. I love you guys. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> the ones who are idiots, no offense. But if you're in, hey, your, you're a blah blah blah. No, 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 no. Didn't mean that personally. That's but why. you are. I mean, you got to reevaluate what the hell you're doing. And if you're a business that sent people down there, sent them down for what? Well, now you are just sliding. Oh, I mean, unless you just wanted to send them to New Orleans for a trip. Mm-hmm. What are you gonna do? A fan piece? At this point, like if you're sus down there, and his company sent him, it wasn't him. Oh, it's not his fault. I mean, they're gonna tell him, hey, we need some fan pieces to justify our expense. So what are you supposed to do? Walk up to fans and go, so uh, are you excited for the game? Okay, what's your name? Or are you worried about COVID so that they can yell at you? I mean, what the hell do you do? I and mean, it, is, it is senseless. I've had people go, are you going to New Orleans? I've said, why would I go? Literally explain to me why I would go. Every single thing is on Zoom. Including now the post-game press conference. Yeah. Which was a different – that's a change yesterday. Yeah, and, and I told you that was coming. Yeah. There was no doubt in my mind that was coming. So everything's on Zoom. What is the point in being there? I mean, look, I think the game is going to be played. I know Ole Miss is doing every damn thing possible to play this football game. We'll talk about that as the day goes on. Yeah. Um, But, I mean, you, know, you get a situation yesterday with the Holiday Bowl cancels four hours before kick. I mean, it just – again, we'll get there. But, yeah, it's just crazy yeah, what's going I got, on. At I, the, got, uh, I got major issues with that. So, uh, as we get into it this morning, it's kind of what's going on. I guess it's kind of an airing of grievances episode uh, a little bit now as I, as, I, as I talk through it. We did not do that on December 23rd, so, you know, who knows. Um, we'll no, see where the day takes certain, us. There's a certain festivus. Yeah. There's a, there's a little – it's dreary out. It's just kind of a kind of a, kind of a grumpy morning a little bit. Um, podcast brought to you every single day by the Oxford Exxon Highway 6 West in Oxford. We're still trying to give you 10 bucks thousand points with the uh, exxon mobile app all you have to do is go to the pump any blue sky in mississippi take a picture of the qr code automatically it'll send you over what you need to do hit a couple buttons 10 bucks right there at the pump for the tank you were filling up at the time courtesy of the oxford exxon and all blue sky locations in mississippi again coming to you from the clark ford studio we are clark fords in amory mississippi 662-257-1900 that number call it ask for Corey clark tell Corey what ford product you're looking for he'll send you a quote within 15 minutes and business hours right to the bottom line no hassle no haggle you get your quote and the rest is completely up to you you can shop that quote around you can do what i've done what i recommend that you do and that's hop into a clark ford today you will love the product you'll love the service Corey wants to be a car guy, wants to be a truck guy. He'll prove it to you when you make the call. 662-257-1900. Guest, join us on the Rafters Music and Food Hotline. Rafters Music and Food on the Square in Oxford and also in New Albany. Uh, great burgers, po' boys, appetizers, uh, beer selection, full bar, the whole deal there at Rafters Music and Food on the Square in Oxford and New Albany. Our coverage of the Sugar Bowl is brought to you by the Clearwater Group. We have a lot of listeners who are either business owners or executives for a variety of different companies. Periodically, I know many of them have projects or issues being dealt with by our state legislature or one of the numerous state agencies in Jackson. So no matter what, you got to deal with it and you want to make sure you get the best results possible for your business. If you need guidance for how to successfully navigate through state government, I recommend you reach out to the Clearwater Group. 
Clearwater Group has been working with us for years. They're in the lobbying business. They have an exceptional reputation in this world, and that really matters. So if you need some guidance on how to move forward on an issue with state government or even with larger local governments, you should reach out to them and get their advice. Just email them at austin at clearwatergroup.ms or look them up on the web. I uh, loaded the MPW Digital pregame show brought to you by Walk-On Sports Bistro last night. That's up it is. on the site. It's also up on uh, YouTube. So check that out. It's Pete Deweese, Ryan Brown, Jeffrey Wright, Ben Mintz, in that order. So if you just want to watch Pete, it's right there at the beginning. You can uh, get to it. It's about three, a little over three hours uh, last evening. So that's up. It's brought to you by Walk-Ons, Walk-On Sports Bistro uh, in Jackson, actually in Ridgeland, and uh, here in Oxford, 720 Highland Colony Parkway in Ridgeland, and then 1737B University Avenue in Oxford. They put everything they've got into bringing you game day with the taste of Louisiana, dig into their mouth-watering Louisiana cuisine, po'boys, gumbo, voodoo shrimp, plus fan favorites like juicy burgers and fresh salads, quality fresh ingredients you can't help but crave. Again, 1737B University Avenue in Oxford and 720 Highland Colony Parkway in Ridgeland. So, kind of mentioned it briefly there, the SEC now 0-4 in, uh, in bowl season. And uh, you can kind of break down why in each game, but losses so far by Mizzou, Auburn, Mississippi State, and um, uh, Florida, and then A and M doing its its opt out of the uh, of the Gator Bowl. Not exactly a sparkling beginning to uh, to bowl season for the league, including State just getting run over last night. Mm-hmm. Um, they got wrecked. They they did they did get wrecked. That was clever. Um, I. To a point that I'm watching it and going, did you guys prepare at all, or did we? It, it said in the stream, did you just talk about the money? Like, what what what, what are you doing here? Because I, I get the whole motivation thing, but they didn't. I mean, it was it was a catastrophe on all levels, if it matters at all. Which Look, it it's not but. a bowl reward to get in the bus in Starkville on Christmas Day and, and go, go to go Memphis. To Memphis. Frankly, it's one of those games, and I know the Liberty Bowl people are nice guys, but it's one of those games the SEC has no business playing in. They play in it because it's a regional game. And but, it. but but it's it's not a good game. And I do th- I know going I, to Memphis is not a reward for anyone. No one goes, hey, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go to vacation in Memphis. No one says that. And so it's not a reward. In, in fact, it's a punishment. And so you end up in Memphis and you play some team from the Big 12 that went 6-6, six and six and they're like, oh, why not? Let's kick their ass. And you get your ass kicked. I don't know what the SEC record is in the Liberty Bowl. It's probably not sparkling. Oh, that's interesting. That's interesting. Like, the SEC's got to do this Vegas thing or something. They got to branch And they are. Out, I, yeah, that, that, that's coming. And get to some other games. And they got to – like, the way, they abandoned Shreveport finally. Because teams are like, this, this is horrible. This is the worst thing that's ever happened to us. The Liberty would be the next one to get rid of. Yes. Frankly, the Liberty even over the Birmingham Bowl because yeah. of your locations and whatnot. Well, and yeah. Yeah. It'd be easier to get rid of Memphis than Birmingham, just the way it works. Yes. And I know the game has some prestige to it, but it's been a minute. You mentioned fan pieces here. Hardman said in the stream that uh, WTVA did a profile on two state uh, – Fans who were in the big city, <laughs> see on their trip. It's it's coming, <laughs> it's coming, and I feel bad for Nick because those are the worst. If you've never had to do one of those as a young journalist, yeah, like if I ever taught journalism school, I would make them go do those stories so that you understand that. Hey, let me let you in on a little secret here. In this field, you're going to have to write stories about stuff that you care nothing about and you hate yourself. The whole time. Well, it's not even the writing. I mean, the, the the journalism key to that is 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 done by people. Is hey, just go talk to strangers. Yeah, and you find know, something. Yeah, figure it out. And yeah, it's some cold calling involved, and you are going to get abused. Some mm-hmm. you are for sure. Yeah, not like calling recruits, frankly. Oh, um, well, it's. I mean, and no joke. Having to do those type of stories did somewhat prepare me for the recruiting stuff. The 
the SEC, I think, had a hell of a year last year in bowls. They typically do fine in bowls. But also, the, I mean, you've got opt-outs, you've got motivation, you've got – Well, who are the teams we're talking about here? Florida went 6-7. and seven. Yeah, they suck. I mean, their quarterback play is as atrocious as it could possibly be at the University of Florida. Yeah, I mean, people do I this. I mean, their quarterback play is god-awful. People do this Anthony Richardson thing, Ole Miss fans do. And, and listen, it, I don't know if he's the guy or not. I have no idea. Just because Lane Kiffin did some tweet, tweet, Twitter stuff with Anthony Richardson doesn't tell me anything. But if it's Anthony Richardson, there's a lot of work to be done. Oh. A lot of work to be done. Oh, I mean, I mean it's so much work to be done. And then Auburn went I mean, six that and seven. And back on quarterback. Bo Ni- they win the football game if Bo Nix oh, is the course. quarterback. Bo Nix wins the game. TJ Finley, yes. LSU when TJ Finley told LSU, hey, I'm 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 out. LSU said, Peace. <laughs> go where you want to go. Not worried about that. Yeah, Auburn. Okay. Cool. Th- th- thank you. Go for it. Yeah. Maybe you actually have to play. So, you know, they lost. Well, I don't know what you read into that. Mississippi State, that's the baffling one to a degree, but at the risk of getting those people all worked up again. They typically kind of give a crap. But they're so focused on Ole Miss lately that it's become obsessive. And when you're that obsessive, after you lose to Ole Miss at home. Oh, you think there's a carryover? I know there's a carryover. You can't get back focused again because so much of their season is built for that game. Leach tournament. also, for whatever reason, sucks in bowl games. I don't know what correlation there is to it, but Mike Leach is horrendous in bowl games. He never wins on Marley. Yeah, I think part of it is like there's a, there's a bit of a laissez-faire with Leach where I don't think he ever tries to get his team motivated at all for a bowl game. He sees it as meaningless, thus it is meaningless. You know what I mean? Because like you can dictate that to a point with your team. R- remind me to go here because I have a question. I got a question in the mailbag, and I'm curious about it. Okay. Mike Leach, hot seat next year, 1 to 10. It's not hot. So we're doing it now, not later? Or am I still reminding you about something later? No, we can do it now. What the hell? I'm confused. Because we'll go to we'll do it now. Mike Leach's hot seat, one to ten, going into next season. It, it's going hot. in or after the season or during the season. Well, no, going, those are two different. Going things. into the season because I, I I can't foresee exactly what they're going to do next year. But going into the season, what's his hot seat meter? It's it's hot enough where he can feel it, right? <laughs> it's not so hot that it's burning his skin. I mean, okay. but he can feel it. Here's my thing with that, and and, and maybe so, but. What are you actually putting him on the hot seat for? Just losing to Ole Miss? He's lost to Ole Miss twice, and now he's lost his bowl game. And the other bowl game that they won, they humiliated themselves with the big brawl. Did they win that one? They won they it. They beat Tulsa? Yeah, to the point, though, where anytime any other team like yells at each other, they have a complete conniption fit on Twitter with, well, are you going to criticize them? You mean they have a chip on their shoulder? Well, they always have a chip on their shoulder. And now he's dealing with... And it's we it, Ole Miss dealt with this when Ole Miss was losing and Dan Mullen was winning. Let's let's, let's balance the scales here. Ole Miss is winning right now. I, look, here's the deal. I would give. And this is going to sound well, maybe it doesn't sound crazy at all because we're having this conversation. It's a it's a it's a carryover off this conversation. I'm looking at their schedule. Okay, if the teams are just what I believe the teams to be next year, you know what I mean? Like no crazy whatever scratch. Okay, their clothes might be so bad. That he's fired at the end of next season. All right, take me through their schedule because I'm curious. Okay. So, and then I'll get back to your other question. But, well, no, let's do that first and I'll get in the schedule. Uh, yeah, no, it's it's five and a half. Yeah, that's what I think. Yeah, five and a half. Not so hot that you're burning your skin. Because you lose three straight to the Rebels. and Well, you know, like, you stand up against a fire, okay? Like, we have an outdoor fireplace. If you stand too close to the outdoor fireplace for too long... You feel it, and you feel it for a while, and you realize, I'm about to get burned. Yeah. Now, if you stand a few feet away from it, it's just kind of nice and warm. You know it's there, but it's not bothering you. It was one of my favorite stats yesterday is that Mike Leach lost two games at the Liberty Bowl this season. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, it's hard to do. <laughs> he did. Uh, well, well and speaking of Ole Miss and State, as we go through this, because this is what matters to them, they need to beat Ole Miss. Dylan had a really good stat yesterday. Ole Miss is 9-2 and two against State since 2000 when they make a bowl game. Oh. Meaning if Ole Miss is just sort of okay, they beat State. State goes crazy when Ole Miss sucks. Well, I've always said this. 9-2. Ole, Ole Miss's path to being a contending team includes dominating Mississippi State. Not, not 
not winning the series, but dominating the series. Yeah, eight and two. And yes, 10. because anything other than that makes no sense. It's like people go, man, what happened to LSU this year? What happened to Auburn this year? Well, look, let's just for, this, for, for kicks and giggles, let's say that Ole Miss and Arkansas both win their bowl games. Just for kicks, okay? It means Ole Miss, Arkansas, and Mississippi State would have combined to win 27 games. Correct. Someone's got to pay that bill. In the same way that if you look up at the end of the year and Alabama's got 13 wins and LSU has 12 and Auburn has 11, someone had to pay that bill. Well, typically that bill gets sent to Oxford, Startville, and Fayetteville. Mm -hmm. If they're the ones sending the bill, well, I kind of typically know who's paying it. LSU paid it this year. Yeah, Auburn, A &M, A &M Auburn pays it occasionally. A and M paid it this year. Well, Auburn was six and seven. Yeah, but my point is yeah. that A and M went zero and three against those teams. Yeah, that's paying bills. Anyway, their schedule. Yeah. Somebody says they should be better next year. Here's the problem with that: is I just think under Leach you have a ceiling. I think to some extent you are what you are. I don't think. I mean, you can have the crazy year where they had with. Was it Graham Harrell or B.J. Simmons or which quarterback went 10 and 11 and 1 with Crabtree? It was Harrell, right? I think so. I don't know. Well, they had that. It was Simmons, Kingsbury, and Harrell those three seasons. I think it was Harrell, the one with Crabtree that I went 11 and 1. I think so. I just don't want to put much money on it right now. You watched him play. You covered I, a game. It's been a minute. Yeah, 13 years. Uh, they can have that special season, but for the most part, they are what they are, okay. in my opinion. So, what's league. their schedule? They open up against Memphis. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, probably please, a W. Please God. Yeah, probably, <laughs> probably a W. What is it? What is that coach's name? Silverfield or whatever? Like, yeah, Ryan Silver <laughs> yeah. Smith or something. Silver something. Silver. Big fan. They're going to go to Tucson and beat Arizona because Arizona sucks. They're horrible. So two and zero. Oh. I mean, I guess. Yeah, yeah. So they're going to be all pumped up and go to Baton Rouge. Two and one. Interesting game. But yeah, I know it's coming. Okay. They play Bowling Green. Three and one. Okay. They play. It actually starts here. Okay, this okay. is the rest of the damn schedule. Okay, A and M, three and two, tough game. Arkansas, where at it's home? in. No, it's in Starkville. So flip, flip a coin. But if they look just playing out my string, if they lose, close. The Arkansas quarterback proven that he gets pretty motivated to play in state teams. He does. Yes. He, if they lose that football game, it's over at that point. Because then at Kentucky, L tough game. It's an L. At Alabama. Yeah. So, all that going on, and then a bye week. Okay. To then, I think, to set up the game that will decide whether he's fired. Okay. Auburn at home. Because after Auburn, Georgia. Okay, so I'm going to give them one and one in the Arkansas-Auburn. Yeah, you got to make it at least. They I'm can't gonna, lose I'm every gonna, game. Because those are two coin tosses. So I'm going to let them win a toss and lose a toss. So that's got them at, we've got them at three and five right now, losing to Georgia. Okay. Four and five, losing to Georgia. So four and six, is that where we got? Go, keep going. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> is that where we're at? Yeah, yeah what's after six. Georgia? Uh, East Tennessee. Yeah, it's W. And then the game in Oxford. So it's difficult for them to get bowl eligible next year. Yes. They have to win at least two games that they're probably not favored in to get bowl eligible. And if they lose to both Arkansas and Auburn, it's their over. season's a disaster. It's four and eight. And I think both Arkansas and Auburn will be capable of beating them. Again, I'm not saying that they'll win the game. But Arkansas will have a third year starter at quarterback. They only have three they only have four games that I feel like are guaranteed wins. And one of those, while I look, they suck, they're gonna win the game. SEC teams, for whatever damn reason, really struggle going out west. They're not losing to Arizona. I, I don't think so, but I'm just telling you, had if they lose the game, I won't be like, oh, my God, that is the biggest upset of the year. If they lose the game, I will tell you, oh, my God, they, they're they imploding. It's over. Yes. Yeah, because Arizona's god-awful. Yes. I'm telling you, that schedule. That's hard to get to six right there. If every team is what we think, you know, they won't be. Now, because, frankly, the Auburn game is fairly winnable because I don't know who the hell the quarterback is at Auburn. Sure, but Auburn will have the talent on hand to possibly beat Mississippi State. Let's not yes. go that far. No, no, no. Grind thinks Dan Mulligan can just come back to state and do some work. They should take him back, and he should want to go back. Dan can't do better than that right now. He's got so much money just sitting there. He can go do TV. He's well, that's be, fine, but if he wants to coach. He can't do better than that. He might not want to coach after a year. Maybe he doesn't. 
But he has he has too much baggage. He has stuff. He can't do better than that job. He's been horrific running programs. It's hard to bring the band back together. I'm again. not. I didn't say you should take it. I said I don't think he could do better than that. Okay. I mean, I think you could do better than that because you have the baggage now. You don't get to come back and go, hey, fresh, fresh start, school down south, school up north, all that stuff. No, oh, no, he couldn't do any of that. No, so you have to come up with a new shtick, and that's hard. And he's not – here's the deal, too. You can play that game on Houston Nud and even to freeze a little better than you can play that game on Lane. Yeah. From a public sure. whatever standpoint. Yeah. Because – while Free is like the Twitter, he didn't really fight back. No. Lane would have a heyday on social media. Yeah, it would be be rough. I mean. The state's in a weird spot. They really are. I mean, I, they're not winning the games that they kind of get motivated to win. Ooh, Ryan's got a good one there. What? Change the outcomes of the Georgia State and Ole Miss games for Auburn, and how hot is the seat on Brian Harson? Claiming, he, <laughs> I mean, he would feel it. Yeah, he would go in the next season basically over without surprising. He would people. go in the next with season with no quarterback on fire. Yeah. Oh God. Yeah, Brian Harson talks yesterday about getting two quarterbacks out of the portal, and I get it. But hey, Brian, Bud, good luck. And there's nothing but weirdness in the portal right now. There's no guarantees in the portal right now. Just some stuff. It's, I mean, the, again, it's, it's the I want to misfit a little bit right now. If Ole Miss brings in Anthony Richardson, there's going to be so much spin. And I'm, I'm not I, – I love you guys. There's going to be so much spin. But, oh, my God, AR-15 with Lane Kiffin. I mean, did you watch him? Because late in the season, he wasn't just bad. He was awful. He was really no different than Emory Jones. He couldn't beat out Emory Jones. Who's was terrible. I mean, Dan Mullum knew he was trying to save his job, and he played – and Dan's pretty good with quarterbacks. Yes, And getting things out of skill sets with and, quarterbacks. And, and he just couldn't play Richardson. Yeah. Now, Lane's proven to be very good with quarterbacks too, and Richardson has a ton of physical talent. He does. He looks good. But, man, you got so much work to do with him with decision-making – with accuracy, mm -hmm. with poise, with leadership, there is so much work to be done with whoever, wherever he goes. Yeah. Podcast brought to you in part by Community Mortgage, Oxford, Memphis, Soto County, and Chattanooga. All underwriting and processing is done in Memphis. So getting local underwriting and understands your market. A leader in condo financing, the float down option, and more. You can find Jason at 662 234 2704. Or J L O W E at community mtg dot com. If you want to bet on these games, and I caught myself yesterday <laughs> wanting to bet on a couple of them. Uh, you can go to Brothrow, Brothrow dot com. It's a social sports betting network, free to use. Really cool, fun way to bet. No third party, no juice. Over time, that saves you money. You can start your own group, make friends, invite your friends. Payment happens within twenty four hours of the conclusion of your bet. You can take the other side of an existing bet. Start a bet. And more at brothrow.com. Uh, don't forget, it's going to get cold out here in the next few days. Hunting season, all that stuff. Go to Muddy Water Camo, muddywateroutdoors.com. Promo code Rebel Grove. Get 35% off all of your purchases. Also go to uh, deadsoxy.com. Got a number of promos going on. 25% um, off any order with the, Rebel, with the code Rebel Grove. You get 30% off any order of $120 or more with the code HOLIDAY30. 40% off any order of $240 or more with uh, code HOLIDAY40. Every tier has a code that can be applied at checkout. Every order over $120 gets a free mesh bag while supplies last, and you get free shipping on orders of $60 or more. Also brought to you by Game Changer Patch Company. Getting ready for uh, New Year's, the bowl games, at Super Bowl parties around the corner, all of that stuff. You want to make sure you are prepared. They're the only two-patch system available in the market today to start hangovers before they start. The warm-up patch is used before or while you drink. The overtime patch is used after you've been drinking to recover while you sleep. The all-natural ingredients will keep you in the game and ready for the next play. It's GameChangerPatch.com. Promo code REBELGROVE20 at checkout for 20% off your purchase. And brought to you by uh, Automation and Control Systems, LLC. ACS is a complete electrical control system solution provider based in Baldwin, Mississippi. 
It's also a Rockwell Automation Recognized System Integrator. They've got a full-time dedicated emergency service and troubleshooting staff and a UL uh, 508A panel shop. They can custom tailor software packages, custom design electrical control panel solutions, and much, much more. Speaking of more, if you want to learn more, go to acsllcms.com or call 662-601-4381. Podcast also brought to you by G&M Pharmacy, 662-236-2222. They deliver locally in the Oxford area, and they offer the med sink to fill your prescriptions the same day each month and take care of you. Whether it's one delivery, whether it's one carry out, you get what you need from your local community pharmacy. So, again, on the Square in Holly Springs, or on South Lamar and Oxford, that's 662-236-2222 with free delivery. A uh, good bit of content up, Rebel Grove, Notebooks, uh, Ole Miss, how they kind of turned their defensive season around after Arkansas. Neil wrote that yesterday. Um, I focused on the Baylor run game this morning and content, so plenty of that content brought to you by the Clearwater Group there at rebelgrove.com. I think Neil's inquiring about mailbag questions right now. Yep, I'm going to do a mailbag later today. My 10 weekend thoughts, my year in review one is done. I just kind of don't know when to hit the publish button. When are you going to hit the publish button? I don't button? know. I haven't decided. Like the 30th? I mean, I guess. What's today, the 29th? I mean, I could do it today. I don't know what the damn difference would be, but I guess I could do it tomorrow. I don't know. Might wait till the 31st. Who, Who knows? knows? Who knows? Plenty of time. I doubt if anybody out there is just waiting with bated breath. Overall, what do you give the year? What's the grade for Ole Miss Athletics in 2021? It's an A because the only sport that matters, they won big. (laughs) Come on. (laughs) Uh, That's a good point. If if the football team's in the Sugar Bowl, it's hard to get everybody off a good mood, isn't it? Like – Nobody's going into like panic mode over basketball to the point of it's changing their their sleep at night, are they? Like Mississippi State won the national championship in baseball. Yeah, they did. It did not get them through December. It didn't. Now their mood's pretty shitty right now. I'm at the risk of making a lot of people angry. College baseball is great, but it's niche. It does a couple things. It, yeah. I mean, I'm agreeing with your point by saying with the things it does. It tied you over to football. It gives you something to enjoy the weather and the sure, things sure. and whatnot. I'm not criticizing it. No, no, I know. But point being, there'd be a large portion of state fans, not everybody because they're batshit crazy, but there'd be a portion of state fans that would trade the athletic seasons for with Ole Miss right now to be in the Sugar Bowl. Today. Of course. Because one one is a meal that has actual substance. Yeah. One is a meal that's kind of like going to like a, I don't know, a Chinese food place where it's pretty good for a minute and then an hour later you're hungry. Oh. Just not a lot of sustenance sustenance to it. It's just it doesn't it doesn't resonate. It doesn't carry. It doesn't have national gravitas, the way college football does. The only thing bigger in American sports than college football is the NFL. And by the way, and we'll get to this in a minute. Kudos to the NFL yesterday. Thank you. What did they do yesterday? Announced the thing about even unvaccinated oh, yeah, players I saw that. Yeah, yeah. come back. Yeah, like, I saw let's, that. They finally had their, oh, my God. They, we're, they agree. They, they did the CDC thing the day before, and then yesterday went, no, 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 everybody, okay, fine. Yes. Yeah, they right. finally had their, you know what, this is going to screw us up moment. Let's fix this. Mm-hmm. Our playoffs are coming. Yeah. Common sense prevailed. Yeah. What happened to the Saints and Dolphins, we don't need to happen to the Rams and the Packers here in a few weeks. In a playoff week. Yeah. We want Aaron Rodgers and Matt Stafford on the field. Yeah. That's good for our bottom line and our product. And our That's what our advertisers want. Yeah. Even the crazy woke ones, in reality, what they want is they want the stars on the field on Sunday afternoon when the playoffs are going on. Mm-hmm. On Saturday night when the playoffs are going on and they've paid these exorbitant advertising fees. They don't want Ian Book or the Rams version of Ian Book on the field in the midst of a 16-3 to playoff game. No, 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 no. They want Tom Brady and Aaron Rodgers going at each other. That's what they want. And the only way to get that is to go, we're not doing this anymore. Kudos to them. Um, JM says, does the Sugar Bowl mean the same as it used to? No longer the SEC champion in a minute. So, well, no, it's not what it was back then, but it's still an access bowl. That group is, is, a, is a whole... There's six bowl games that yeah. resonate 
Yeah, it's one of the. And there's two that are above the other four. Sure. And that's the way it is. Yeah. You're in a New Year's Six Bowl. Yeah. Nationally, there are six that count, and then everybody else enjoyed as it. Congratulations, enjoyed as your program. Again, there are only four programs in the country that wouldn't trade places with Ole Miss and Baylor right now. Four. And you can name them. You don't have to guess them. Mm-hmm. That's it. And it's the sport that resonates. It's the sport that pays the bills. It's the sport that determines TV contracts. It's the sport that resonates. I'm not criticizing the other sports, but college basketball has become a very niche, late February, March sport. Now, you want to be good at it because the tournament gets it's eyeballs. Huge. Sure. The tournament gets real eyeballs. You can start to argue that the women's basketball has become a bigger sport because their tournament gets eyeballs, not to the extent that the men's tournament does, not even close, but it does get eyeballs. Sure. Yeah, Turkey says, yeah, but State can't fire two coaches after only two years on the job. Yeah, they can. College sure. football is nuts. Yeah. There is no rule anymore. I agree with you. The yeah. money, I, I, and I know where he's coming from. Yeah. I assume it's a he, maybe it's a she. Yeah. The way it used to be, but now with the contracts and such, when you're paying coaches $8 million or whatever it is, you – no, no, there's no patience. Yeah. And the last note on that other before we kind of move on is the SEC is 0-4. We mentioned State at length. We mentioned Auburn at length. They had no quarterback. They would have won the game with Bo Nix. Uh, Florida is a disaster at quarterback. And then, frankly, Missouri is a disaster at quarterback and yep. they have no run defense and they put a triple option team. So none of that surprises me from the standpoint. It also just tells you that it is a complete and utter quarterback sport for the most part. And if you have one, you win football games. It's also one of the reasons why I like Ole Miss against Baylor is they have the better quarterback on the first. Well, you watched the Saints game the other night, right? I, I did, yes. It's yeah. about quarterbacks. I mean, you can overcome it on occasion, but it's difficult. Look through Super Bowls. Who won? Name the quarterback. I mean, there are a couple that are you like, oh, really? Wow. Yeah. For every that? Trent Dilfer and Joe Flacco, there's there's a Peyton Manning and a Tom Brady and an Eli Manning and a Brett Favre and an Aaron Rodgers. And Come yeah. on. Dudes. Dudes yeah. who could pick up a team, put them on their back, and go ride. Troy Aikman. Joe Montana from my era. Roger Staubach. Terry Bradshaw. Dudes. Bradshaw's over is under is overrated. But he yeah. was, but he was still very good. Ken Stabler was a very good quarterback. Joe Theismann was a very good quarterback. This isn't a new thing. If you have a big time quarterback, you got a shot. If you don't, you probably don't. Brian Harson, the coach at Auburn in twenty twenty four. Shit, I'm not sure he's the coach in 2023. What's their schedule? <laughs> I mean, they have issues now. Yeah, I mean, what else are we doing today? It's fine. Uh... And they don't like him. He kind of got hired because the AD decided, I'm not doing this booster thing, which I admire. But. But. And then he had all the vaccine stuff that I think people look at it, even though even those who sort of agree with them look at it and go, what a distraction. Here, real quick. We'll do that in a second, okay? Okay, sure. Uh. Super Bowl winning quarterbacks, okay? Yeah. In order this way. Okay. Tom Brady, Patrick Mahomes, Nick Foles, Peyton Manning, Russell Wilson, Joe Flacco. That's the first one that's kind of whatever, but not terrible. No, Flacco wasn't terrible. It was a long, long tenured quarterback. Um, Nick Foles is still in the league. Eli Rogers, Roethlisberger, Brad Johnson. Okay, there's one. Trenton Dilfer. It's two. Warner, Elway, Favre, Aikman, Young, and then you're back into like 90-91 at that point. What's wrong with 90-91? I'm not saying anything is wrong with it. I'm saying that the game. But even the game back then, you had to have a quarterback. Had to have quarterback play. Even back then when it was defense and running games, the teams that won had great quarterbacks. When the Cowboys went from – um, Roger Staubach to Danny White, they stopped winning championships. When the Steelers went from Terry Bradshaw to the Cat after Terry Bradshaw, they stopped winning championships. Yeah, I mean, going farther back, Mark Rippon, Jeff Hostetler, Montana, Doug Williams, Phil Sims, Jim McMahon, Plunkett, Theismann, Bradshaw, Greasy. I mean, Plunkett was a great quarterback. Yeah. 
So yeah, not many duds on the list. No, there's a couple, but not hard many. To, hard to win it. It's, and those teams, like you're talking about the Giants with Hostetler, number one, he he filled in for Phil Sims. He did. And number two, that defense was they historically were damn good. good. Yeah, I mean that's Lawrence Taylor and 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 Gary Banks. Reasons and all those yeah, dudes. all those cats. Yeah, that's true. At Ravens defense with Dilfer, and I think Dilfer's somewhat underrated as a quarterback. Do you really? I mean, I'm sorry, not Dilfer, Flacco. I think Flacco was somewhat underrated. I thought he was better than people gave him credit for. But that Ravens defense was historically yeah, good. Historic. I mean, it's Ray Lewis and Ed Reed, and come on. Yeah. I mean, man had the greatest defense ever. I mean, Ed Reed's yeah, yeah, the best yeah. safety that's ever lived. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that, I don't even know that it's debatable. I mean, the only one close is probably Ronnie Lott. Ed yeah. Reed's better. All right, Auburn's schedule. Mercer, San Jose State, Penn State at home. Big game there. Yeah, kind of. Missouri. I was someplace when San Jose State won a game in an, at an SEC town, and that marked the end. Just just a note. Chad Morris never recovered from San Jose State. No joke. In year two, don't, don't start. They're not They're not terrible. But he never won an SEC game is also why he was fired. Who the hell else they lose to? They lose to North Texas or Colorado State or both? No, they. I can't remember. It was one or the other. I think they lost to Colorado State. Anyway, go ahead. Sorry. Mercer, San Jose State. Okay. Penn State. Okay. Missouri. Where's Missouri? Home. Okay. LSU. Home. Okay. okay. Georgia. Whew. Ole Miss. And Ole Miss is in Oxford? Yep. Okay. Before a bye, which they just get kind of weird from a, inside the, the, the building standpoint and mm -hmm. things aren't going well. Their schedule is actually not bad. Uh, Arkansas State. Home away. Okay. A and M home. Okay. Western Kentucky, Alabama. Okay. Their schedules. Yeah, the schedule. Given is, what their schedule has to be, that's pretty manageable. It's survivable. Yeah, I mean the Penn State game is kind of big there. It's real big. But most of their games are at home that you kind of have as coin flips. I mean their road games are but, either. But is A and M a coin flip at this point? A and M's better than Auburn at this they point. Are. The roster's better. The road games are Georgia, Ole Miss, State, and Alabama. You'd lose them all. My point being, I'd rather play games I'm going to lose on the road. Sure. And that's at least two that I'm probably losing on the road. Oh, I could lose all four of those games. Grind, do you guys like that those are the, both home or both away in the same season, or would you like them one and one? Like, Ooh, Blake, give me Drinkwitz over Harson. Ooh. I mean, do I have to just pick one? Um, Because the Bloom's off Drinkwitz a little bit, too. A lot. I mean, it ain't exactly going well no. in Columbia right now. Who'd you rather have, Harson or Drinkwitz? Harson. You would rather have Harson? Yeah, for sure. For what reason? I just probably think he's overall a better person. Person? Yeah. Okay. It was just interesting word because I thought Drinkwitz seemed like whatever. Mm, I don't know. Is he like creeping you out or something now? Not really creeping me out. He's just Is it the Star Wars thing. No the lightsaber. No, none of that. It's 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 the running back doesn't play. You act like it was your decision that he didn't play. And then when you lose the game, you use that as an excuse. And you whine and you fuss and you carry on. Kind of be a man for a minute. Hey, we lost. We lost. I mean, any good coach will tell you, when you lose, own it. Even if it's not your fault. Mm -hmm. Own it publicly. Privately, you can call people into your office and tell them, I, took, I just took a dagger for you, champ. But just so you know, I know that yeah. Just so we you, all on the same page here. So that we all know what happened here. But publicly. Yeah. I ate that one. Yeah, it's just rule number one. When your team loses to a lower level team, it's on you. Always. Always. Eat it. Bring it to the press conference on a plate 
and take your knife and fork and eat it right there in front of everybody with the cameras rolling. Every single bite. Leave nothing on the plate. And then what you do privately is your deal. Leif uh, says drink is a more awkward Hugh Freeze. Prove me wrong. No, I can't argue that. No. Freeze is a better football coach overall. Yes. But, yeah, that's that's a similar. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. There's a lot of similarities between the two people. But, no, he's, he's more awkward than Hugh. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. I mean, if you told me I had to sit down and have a conversation with one of the two. It's not even. I'd, I'd pick you. Yeah. Okay. But when you drop one, own it. To me, it's a warning sign. When I see a coach lose to an inferior team and not just eat it right there in front of everybody, I'm like, oh, something's wrong. Also, it's one here, thing here to we lose. Go. I mean – Army's done a good job of maxing its program, but it's also one thing to lose them when you have a week to prepare versus you have a month and you're supposed to have SEC athletes. Yeah. To not be able to hem that in and find ways to run on them, which they're not great defensively. I mean, it. By the way, on your list of underrated coaches, Munkin's on it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's done a really good job. He has done a good job. They've done – I mean, those, those programs have done a good job just finding guys who fit. I mean, Ken, what's his name, did a good job at Navy for a really long time. Oh, yeah, he did. You know, Air Force got a dub yesterday. Yeah, I was supposed to make fun of you about that. Were you? You picked Louisville? I did, yeah. yeah. Oh, well. I think it's like we have a read on it, but, yeah, it's fine. I think we, we both got Houston right, at least. Yeah, so I got, got that Houston. One. I kind of looked at that one as sort of a almost a borderline lock, and Auburn scared me there for a while because I thought Auburn was going to win. And then, who's the quarterback for Houston? Clayton Toon. That's a name I think. Keep needs, that just out of my mind a little bit. Just put it on your list somewhere. Really? Yeah, just in case. Okay. Although, if you're him, I mean, why are you leaving? Mm-hmm. You're the guy. They won twelve games. He's a good quarterbacks coach. They joined the Big 12 in 2024 as of now. Yeah. I mean, Holgerson's, okay. Holgerson's a good coach. He it's is. fine. I mean, he's kind of weird, and I don't know that you just hand your program. Who won last night? The, the Gophers or West Virginia? Minnesota. Did they? Gophers won. It's okay. like 18-6. to six. It's a good game. Very Big Ten game. Defense was all locked. Very Big Ten game. Defense was locked in. Covered, covered the spread. Big game for the Gophers. Keep winning. Row your boat. They're very comfortable with that low-scoring game. Didn't throw. A win's a win. He's fine. Yeah. I mean, Fleck has kind of established himself. as For the most part, they're going to be pretty good. Yeah, they're all right. Not going to go win the Big Ten. Not going to win the national championship. But they're probably under P.J. Fleck. Not going to go 2-10 and 10 ever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so you just roll your boat. And you're going to play in some bowl games. He seems like a, you know, pretty good program guy. Kind of fits them a little bit. Kind of fits them a little. Yeah. 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 Makes, makes some sense. Podcast brought to you in part by Northeast Spark, N-E-S-P-A-R-C. Service people across rural communities. Two packages, the Ignite, the 100 Mbps, or the Blaze, the one gig that powers the Clark Ford Studio. Your hometown team bringing you world-class broadband. That's nespark.com, 662-238-3159. Phone service, parental controls, network security, and much more. So to get the best internet around, give them a call, 662-238-3159. Five, nine. Pinpoint Commercial Real Estate is based out of Jackson. They service the entire state and all commercial asset classes such as retail, office, industrial, and land. This week's property spotlights on Paragon Center in Ridgeland. 150,000 square feet of Class A office space located in um, Highland Colony Parkway. Minutes from the new Costco, Walk-On Sports Bistro, I-55, and more. It's uh, alongside some of the most affluent neighborhoods in Mississippi. If you'd like to learn more about this great opportunity to house your professional office, give Sam Cox, B.B. Mitchell, a call, 601-586-3220. With uh, Christmas, Christmas is over, Valentine's Day right around the corner. Still got time to take care of, uh, take advantage of Blue Delta Jeans video gift cards. It's a gift card with the built-in video screen. Purchase a gift card. Blue Delta will help you record a personalized message, upload to the video card uh, just for you. It's bluedeltajeans.com to purchase or shoot the guys on uh, social media, a DM, and they'll take care of you. Also brought to you by uh, Lamons Fine Jewelry. Speaking of Valentine's Day, Lamons at 1126 
North Lamar Boulevard in Oxford. Has been serving the Oxford area for uh, more than 73 years. Engagement rings, wedding rings, fine jewelry, watches, pearls, fashion jewelry, children's jewelry, collectibles, and more. Lamons is the gold standard in fine jewelry. Visit them at lamonsfinejewelry.com or call them at 662-234-2777. We're also brought to you by Comer Heating and Air, Southern Air Conditioning and Heating, different names, same great service, same great products. If you live in Oxford, Tupelo, or the surrounding area, call Comer, 662-801-1777. If you live in Hernando, Memphis, or the surrounding area, call Southern, 662-429-4429. And we're brought to you by the College Corner. It's a one-stop Rebel Shop, two locations in the Jackson area. One's in Ridgeland, one's in uh, Flowood. You can also go to collegecornerstore.com, plus you can find them on Facebook and Instagram. And we're brought to you by our friends at Pinnacle. Uh, They provide detailed, specialized investment management, financial planning, retirement planning for individuals and businesses, and so much more right there out of Madison, Mississippi. But you can get in touch with them on the World Wide Web, as you might imagine. It's mypinwealth.com, M-Y-P-I-N-N, wealth.com. Podcast also brought to you by Johnston Hill Creamery. That's johnstonhillcreamery.com. They're closed right now. They reopen on January 4th. Your local cheese shop make all their cheese in-house using brown dairy farm milk and all their uh, add-on items, the pepper jelly, the spiced honey, plenty of different great options there with Johnston Hill Creamery. So hopefully use them for your Christmas boxes and they'll be back with you on January 4th. There again, just off Molly Bar on White Oak Lane. Uh, all right. More bowl cancellation yesterday. Um, the holiday bowl canceling four hours prior to kick. A lot of the uh, the fans for Washington State and uh, – is it Washington State? No, it wasn't Washington NC State. State. NC State, sorry. NC State's had a year with COVID. Let's have a moment. I mean, in all seriousness. No, I mean, let's have a yeah. moment of silence Jesus. for them. Because, yeah. Their AD has got to be the most frustrated human being on earth right now. Um, NC State, UCLA. UCLA having issues. They have uh, – they did not – they four hours prior to the game because they said they had one defensive lineman – Healthy for the uh, for well, the then game. Well, play him and move a couple of backup offensive guards and play the game. No, I'm totally serious. No, I know. Play the game. No one gives a – just go play the game. NC State gave up their Christmas holiday. Think of how many of their kids' parents paid – Flew across the country. To fly across the country and to stay in San Diego, California. Not cheap. To watch their sons play their final games. And you canceled the day of? The day of. No, no, no. 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 Why are you testing these people the day of the game? Explain. Why are we testing people the day of the game? That's the worst part of it for me. With two parts. A, that. And B, as you said, the lack of whatever the word is. Respect. There's a lot of words that fit here. Mm-hmm. To not make any effort to play the game. Integrity. That even if you lose, nobody cares. Give your kids who are on the field a chance to play the game. Yeah, Give course. the Thompson kid a chance to play quarterback. One. Well, the UCLA time. kids oh, were still like, at the hotel late yesterday saying we wanted to play. Yeah. Yeah. There was no team vote. They got pushed around by people. There was no team vote. No. 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 Because if you polled kids and said they you would play, play, they'd say yeah. Again, let's review the list of college football players who died this year of COVID. Starting alphabetically, going A to Z, there is none. Yeah, move guys, do whatever is necessary, even with the rules as they are. To but play why are the we game. testing on game day? Yeah, I, I don't know what. What, what is that about? I have no clue. If a player has symptoms, just don't play. Just don't play. You only have two defensive linemen. Okay, well then play them. And move some other cats from defense, the offensive guards. They've played defensive line before. I'm going to guess that every one of the UCLA players played in high school and were probably one of the best players at their high school, which means they played multiple positions at some point in their life. Just go play. Have fun. You're a coach. You make millions of dollars, Chip Kelly. Simplify the damn thing and play the game. You're going to lose anyway. NC State was going to beat your ass no matter what. 
So go take your beating. Let your game get. Ha- let your game happen. Show some respect to your opponent, to the bowl people, to your own people, to your people, to your bowl people, to your fans who drove down from Los Angeles to go to San Diego for the day. Have some decency is the word, but no, no, no. You got to make it all about you, and you got to do this. Oh, we, we, we. and then they do well, the thing that's most paramount for us: North Star. Our North Star, their quote, is the health of our student-athletes. How noble. How noble. Give me a break. I mean, seriously, shut up. That will always be our North Star guiding us through the darkness, through the wilderness. I thought it was interesting yesterday. Um, I think it was AJ Finley. I think it was Ted Lewis from Nola from Nola dot com that I asked him, "Has it been strange with all the cancellations not going down when you thought you were going to go down? Has that affected preparation? Do you worry about whatever?" And I don't have it verbatim. I I wrote it down somewhere because I thought I might use it later today or tomorrow. Finley's quote was. No, we don't think about that because we're no matter what the media says, we're going to play the game. Mm-hmm. And I thought that was an interesting way to put it in a lot of different ways. Um, as, as I told you, I mean, the the, the program is hell bent on playing the game, and yeah. that's a good thing. Yeah, you should. they're locked in that if at all possible, they are playing the game. And from listening to the Baylor kids, by the way, over the course of the week, and they they appear to be too. they appear to be too they they appear to be very locked in on the game and yeah. wanting to. The play only the difference game. of the two was how they would have handled Christmas under different scenarios. Otherwise, they pretty much said the same thing on yeah. both sides. Yeah. I guess point being, it felt like it was almost kind of a conversation topic at some point, maybe just between players, position groups, team, I don't know, of, hey, chill out, we're good, just don't worry about all the noise yeah. that's going on with the with the stuff. I'm at the risk of running – I mean, if, you, if YouTube's watching this, we'll probably get in trouble, or I will. Why can't you tell people, hey, listen, guys, if you don't report symptoms – the NFL just did this yesterday – as long as they say they don't have any symptoms. Hey, John, you feeling okay? Yep, good. It's that simple. But if everyone's going to test, 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 we're not going to get there, especially in basketball. Not going to get there. No, it's in trouble, period. And, and co- college basketball coaches will tell you that it's in trouble if we can't chill out. But test, test, test. What test, is test. mandatory testing? I don't from know. basketball. Well, I think once you have somebody with symptoms or contact tracing, or you had to test and test and test, and it's December, January. This is the cold season. Remember that? Everybody got sick in January at school. Remember that? When you got the flu, did you get the flu in June or did you get the flu in January? Mm-hmm. It's just silly. I keep waiting for common sense to win out. It did finally with the with the um, NFL yesterday, to some degree, with the CDC. Like CDC said, if even nurses who are asymptomatic, who are vaccinated, who test positive, can still return to work. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, I've heard of no nothing. There's been no storyline that I'm aware of around playoff teams having any issues at all. They've all shut up and just moved on to their games. Yeah. I mean, Georgia was like, yeah, we've got a couple issues or whatever, but we're here. I mean, they did the boat tour. Did they? Yeah. Did they really? Yeah. Why not? Well, so was it, was it UCLA that the internet was criticizing them yesterday for going to SeaWorld? They said that's what caused it, was they went to SeaWorld, I think. I think that was. The, I, don't know. <laughs> I think that was. The, I mean, I'm the wrong person for this because I, I'm, I'm, I'm so, I'm so completely opposite of ninety percent of the people in my field. I don't understand why we're testing people who are asymptomatic. I have no symptoms. I'm not going to get tested today. I heard people say, "Well, you know, 
I was curious. So you went and got a COVID test? Well, you know, I'm I'm 55 years old. So you just went and got a random COVID test? Just for the sheer fun of it. Well, we've got company coming. Do you have symptoms? You have no symptoms? So you, I mean, in what other world do you do that? Before COVID, did you walk around with, hey, I feel perfectly good, but you know what? I'm going to go get a flu test. You ever hear anyone that did that? I feel great, but we have some family coming. So I'm going to go get a strep and a flu test. I'm going to go to the, to the clinic and I'm going to say, hey, I feel great, but I'm going to get tested for all this stuff. Russell makes the point, and I mean, I do think that it's back to the conversation from earlier in the week. I do think sometimes the team's just going, yeah, it's not where I'm just, we just don't want to play. Coaching staffs. Then don't go down. Then don't yeah. accept the bid. But you're hurting your own damn players. That's what none of them seem to be focusing on at all, is but, they're hurting their own but players. But, Chase, this is easy. If you don't want to go, don't accept the invitation. Well, we can't do that because that looks bad. Well, this looks bad. But to to the point, and, and to, to UCLA's credit, no one nationally is – Bruce Feldman wrote, and I like Bruce. What was the word? I wish I could remember it now. Oh, God. Um, you what now? Feldman's word about what happened to the UCLA just was like de- devastated or eviscerated or something. The, the, well, the depth was, right? Is that how he put it? Well, but, but, he, but he referred to it in this way of it ravaged the room. I mean, you hear that and you're like, oh, man, these guys are really bad. It's just, I don't get it. I'm completely lost at this point. Uh, by the way, LSU has hired a defensive coordinator. It is Chiefs linebacker coach Matt House. Oh, yeah, I saw that. He's yesterday. previously been a D.C. at FIU, Pitt, and Kentucky. I saw that. FYI there. Uh, what's going on? So what happened? Did Holgerson yelled and told Harson to hurry up? He was more. He wasn't really upset at Harson. He was upset at the fact that he's standing out there after after the game for twenty something minutes, waiting for a press conference to start. Because predictably, the game's in Alabama. All the Auburn riders are getting their pound of flesh off Brian Harson at the end of the game, and it kept going and kept going and kept going, and he was ready to get done. I mean, it was happy hour. I mean, I. I get it. I kind of get it. And so it came across as him yelling at Harson, but I but think, he wasn't actually mad at Brian Harson. No, he was mad at the bowl people because his opening statement was, "You should do two press conferences." I've been out here for twenty something hours. He didn't care about me. He wasn't mad at Brian Harson. <laughs> he was mad that this was going on so long, and it came across as directed at Harson. But it, I get it. He, you, no one wants to stand there and wait thirty minutes for a press conference to start. Take it from people who have stood there waiting for an hour for a media opportunity to start. It's miserable. They were always going to talk to Auburn people longer than Houston people at that game yesterday. Yeah, decimated. Always. Decimated was the word. Decimated. If I use the word decimated, the room chase was decimated. Mm-hmm. You go, oh, my God. Our team was decimated by the flu. You think, man, people got really sick. Right? Right? Is everybody okay? Yeah. COVID decimated the defensive line. Oh, God. Thoughts and prayers. What does that even mean? But that, to, 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 so to UCLA's credit, they did the, if they never wanted to play the game because they knew NC State was going to beat them, accepting the bid and then waiting till the last minute to go, hey, we tried. We really did, but we just, we've been decimated by COVID. Everybody goes, oh, man, Warriors. God bless you. Good luck. Hope you get well. Your health is most important. I just don't – it's the it's the not wanting to play the game that I don't really understand. I'm having a really hard time getting there in my head because it doesn't really matter if you win or lose. At all. All you're doing is giving your kids another chance to get on the field. That's it. It, it does not It's matter. completely hypocritical. Well, we just can't. Why? You don't have anybody on your whole roster who ever played defensive line before who could go out there and just. No one's going to hold it against you. Try to hold a gap. Okay. So what we want you to do, try to hold a gap. Yeah. Yeah. Joe over there just needs a blow for a second. Double plays. 
Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll get him back in. It's all good. Yeah, just rush the passer. Occupy some space. Yeah, take B-gap. Remember taking B-gap? Yeah, do that. Remember back when you were a freshman and you were scout team and we had to put you over there for a day? Do that again. They're college football players. They're interior linemen. I promise you at some point in their high school careers they played the other side of the ball. Mm -hmm. Maybe a lot. It's like the wide receiver that's a really good SEC or Pac-12 wide receiver. He's played some DB in his life. Uh, Yeah. The seven-on-seven team that he played on, he played DB too. Now, he might not have been the superstar on DB that he was at wide receiver, but he's played some. At most schools, he probably guarded the other team's best player. In Chris the Vaughn used to call it cat coverage. Yeah, you tell him you yeah. can't run some cat coverage. Hey, you see that cat? Number cover eight, him. cover him. That's it. That's all we're doing tonight. Again, you're Chip Kelly making, what, $6 million a year? Simplify. Well, we didn't have enough people to run our scheme. Well, then change the scheme. You don't have to win the game. It's a bowl game. Nobody's watching. Again, you probably weren't beating them anyway. It's idiotic. Truly, it's idiotic. So, point being, for any game other than a playoff game, and probably next on that list would be Ole Miss and Baylor. I mean, anything could happen. I don't know that a game is starting until like an hour before, to where I really believe, oh, no, this thing's 100% on. Well, I mean, our friend Austin Barber called me yesterday. He goes, hey, before I go down there, is it is that game going to get played? And I said, Austin, look, I think so. I mean, there's no sign right now that it's not. But now I'm not going to promise you in blood. Yeah, Both teams supposed to get there today. Baylor at like 245, Ole Miss at like 430, something like that. Actually, that's exactly the time. So, um, yeah. I mean, a- I mean, if you're dumb enough for everybody to get on the plane and fly down in the moment that you land in New Orleans, hey, let's go test, well, that's on you. Yeah, at that point, then we're all, who knows? I mean, I mean, I, why are you doing that? I'm the guy that says, hey, look, fellas, nobody has symptoms. Right? Well, because look, here's the deal. If you're going to do that, you might as well go ahead and say, hey, the game's likely not being played because this is what we're doing. Yeah. We're going to go test the entire roster. Yeah. Let fans know, hey, heads up, we're doing this. But, I, that, that's more my frustration is this lack of transparency on what is even going on. Because you're hanging the fans out to dry is sure. what you're doing. <clears throat> sure. You're hurting the players and you're hanging the fans just I mean who Well let's who take knows? The, let's take the Sugar Bowl as an example. Yeah. And again, for the record, there's absolutely no sign of this at all. But there are people going down there what tomorrow? The 30th is the big day for most people to go. Dropping $400 a night, $500 a night on Probably. hotels. Tickets are expensive. Tickets are expensive. Especially on the Ole Miss side. Baylor yeah. side is a lot cheaper. Gas is expensive right now. Dinner's expensive. Flights are expensive. Everything's expensive. Everything's expensive. When you get down there and at 6 o'clock, it's like, ah, you know what? Just can't do it. Somebody's room got decimated. It's a hell of a note. They're not getting refunds at all those places. Travel's not being no. replaced. No, I mean, you get your ticket money back. That's it. Again, if you're an NC State fan who traveled over there, you're a parent of a player. Odds are you flew across the country. You stayed in a hotel room that was at a minimum three hundred a night. You gave up. Those kids gave up their Christmas holidays, man. Don't you think if you told the NC State kids, "Hey, we're not going to get to play the game," okay, but then can I go home for Christmas, please? Mm-hmm. I'd like to spend home with my mom and dad and my brothers and my sisters and my girlfriend or whoever. Yeah, I don't think I want to stay in Raleigh and practice. Come on. To me, you know, that's kind of unforgivable. Like I have new fav- I have new teams to cheer against next year, and yeah. UCLA is at the top of the list. Four hours. They're at the top of the list. The gates like, were opening in fifty-five minutes. I want your season to be decimated next year. <laughs> Podcast brought to you in part by Nick's Tan and Associates. Nick's Tan Oxford dot com six six two two eight one one two zero zero. For both sides of the real estate market here in Oxford and Lafayette County, names you can trust are Keith Graham, Clay DeWeese, and their team of associates will help you out on the buy side or the sell side and get the deal you need to get into your next home or get your home sold here in Oxford. So, again, you can uh, click the link in my message board signature, rebelgrove.com. Tell them we sent you. That's nickstanoxford.com, 662-281-1200. Also brought to you by John Edwards, Regency Travel Incorporated in Memphis. It's part of Virtuoso. It's a worldwide network of travel partners that allows John to supply his clients with added values, unique benefits, simply not available to other travelers. 
Just get in touch with him. Give him some parameters. Give him a budget. He will give you options. And uh, know this, you don't have to live in or near Memphis to take advantage of his services. 901-494-3387 or J. Edwards at regencytravel.net. Opa is Oxford's newest restaurant on the historic square, a delicious menu featuring gyros, wraps, kebabs, fresh redfish, lamb chops, and more. Uh, handcrafted cocktails, frozen libations, and amazing candle at Patio 306 South Lamar, just south of the square courthouse. Also brought to you by Grenada Nissan. If you're in the market for a Nissan vehicle, Grenada Nissan's the place to go. They've got a complete selection of new and previously owned Nissan uh, deals. Uh, great uh, lease deals as well. It's GrenadaNissanUSA.com. Chase mentioned a mailbag. I'll have one up later today. It's brought to you by Whitney McNutt, Tommy Morgan Incorporated Realtors. Whitney serving you for all of your real estate needs in Oxford and Tupelo. You can reach her at uh, 662-567-2573 or 662-842-3844. Service specialist is recruiting both an executive director and a director of sales for a brand new independent living community in Oxford. They're seeking individuals with strong sales experience and or extensive managerial administration and operations execution background. Senior living experience is preferred, but it's not required. So those of you that want to move to Oxford and lead the opening of a major business development with a successful company, this is your opportunity. Excellent pay and benefits. Referral fees always given, so reach out to 662-832-5138 with your interest. Uh, we're also brought to you by Alpha Specialties, your trailer-specific professional there in Pearl, Mississippi. It's alphaofms.com, 601-932-9798. If you are driving through Jackson on your way down to New Orleans, stop at the Rogue, check out their collegiate collection. A lot of great Ole Miss Branded gear there at The Rogue, 4450 I-55 North, or therogue.com. And don't just accept what you see, but imagine something new. Step forward and chase after a better version of yourself. Every day, Corinth Dental is helping people reinvent themselves one smile at a time. Dr. Bubba McQueen, Dr. Jenny Beth Hendrick are devoted to restoring and enhancing the natural beauty of your smile using conservative, state-of-the-art procedures, including Invisalign. These clear aligners are the virtually invisible way to improve your smile. Call Corinth Dental today for a no-cost digital scan of your teeth. Let them show you the way to a straighter, healthier smile. 12 months, no interest, no down payment available at uh, CorinthDental.com. And then don't forget, if you live here in or around Oxford, the deadline for signing up for 2022 Youth Spring Soccer with the Oxford Park Commission is coming up. It's January the 2nd. It's the final day to register your children for next season. If your kids participated in the fall, they can return for just $25. All new participants are $50. Leagues are open for birth years 2018 to 2007. Visit OxfordParkCommission.com to register. We're about to have our final Oxford Park Commission experience. This is it. Carson's playing basketball for fun. Oh, is he really? <laughs> yeah. Yes, he's, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, he's playing. Uh, I mean, he's gonna miss so much because he's got so, so many soccer obligations. But he's playing um, OPC co-ed basketball. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah. Kind of what the hell? Well, because he and some of his buddies are playing. Okay, I mean, yeah, you know, no, whatever. it's fun. It's awesome. OPC does a great job, man. I mean, all. I mean, totally seriously, they do good stuff for adults. I mean, we we, we did like the flag football and stuff in college. They yeah. do stuff all yeah. the way through. Yeah, yeah. I always wanted to do the kickball. I think it would be fun. I, I do too. I think kickball yeah. would be a lot of fun. I think it would be fun. I mean, it's a complete nutter beer league, but yeah. Well, like, of course, that's the point. That's yeah, why it's yeah, fun. Yeah. I don't want to be serious anymore. <laughs> you don't want serious kickball. No, 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 no. I mean, like, like if I'm playing softball now, I'm like out in the outfield. Hey, look, I, I'll run for it, but I'm not diving for the ball or anything. Here. And I don't really want to pitch because of how hard they come back at you. Oh, no, no, no. no I'm no, not no. pitching. I want to play out here. I'm playing in the outfield. <laughs> Yeah, do you want to play third base? Hell no. And I'm not trying to stretch a single into a double. I'm not going first to third. It's nice and easy. And yeah, hopefully it's a beer league. That's my first question is, are we having beer or are you guys drinking like Gatorade and stuff? Because that will impact my decision. Because I'm not out here to get hurt. Or, or win the trophy. Like, yeah, yeah like, no, no, no. Because no. you know there'll be those couple teams that go, we're going to win the trophy. Yeah, we're here to win. Well, I'm not. Yeah. And today you won. Congratulations. <laughs> Winning is optional. 
Yeah, Carson said, he said, here's his first practice. I think it's today, maybe tomorrow. He goes, what I'm really hoping is I'm on a bad team where I can just shoot. Oh. Yeah. Trying to light it up a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 What size goals do they play on? Uh, ten foot. Is it full of it? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Kids 13 to, 13 to 14, but he barely qualified, so he, he's He just him. snuck in? He snuck in. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, John Madden passes away yesterday. Yeah, eighty-five, right? Is that correct? Eighty-five years old. Um, the had, first Super Bowl I ever remembered watching as a kid him? was Super Bowl. I guess that was eleven. I don't know what it was. It was the Raiders beat the Vikings. Fran Tarkenton and Ken Stabler quarterbacks okay. in that game again. It's pretty good. Again, it's a quarterback league. Even back then, they barely threw it. Um. <sighs> Known more today to the younger generation is the video game guy than the coach. Because what's interesting about it is even – I mean, I'm I'm 38. um, I don't recall him really coaching for the most part. I don't have a lot of memory of – I mean, I obviously know it and you know whatever, but I I don't have that that thing in my mind. Yeah, see, I remember his teams. Stabler and um, Ray Guy was their punter. Oh, yeah. Dave Casper was their tight end. They had Jack Tatum back in their secondary. and um, Yeah, I mean, so he was done well before I was even born. I mean, his last season as a head coach was 1978. Lester Hayes, cornerback. You don't remember any of these guys, do you? I mean, I know the names, but yeah. no, I couldn't pick them out. What I remember as a kid, and I want to say it was on Christmas Eve, so I grew up in Ruston, and the quarterback for the Baltimore Colts was Burt Jones, who's from Ruston. And uh, we would all – pretty much cheer for the Colts because of Burt Jones. And they played the Raiders in a playoff game at Old Municipal Stadium in Baltimore. And it went double overtime, and the the Raiders won. I remember being all into that game and just hated the Raiders because of that pr- predominantly. But they were known as this physical, almost borderline dirty team with John Madden yeah, and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. He retires because of burnout and an ulcer condition. Um, I mean, frankly, fairly early in his career. I mm-hmm. mean, he only coaches 69 to 78. But in those seasons, in the NFL, 103 and 32 yeah. with seven ties. Yeah, He wins the division all but two seasons, including mm-hmm. his last, or one of the two was his last. And then he gets the one Super Bowl, as you mentioned, in 1976. But he loses in the AFL championship, so the Super Bowl, whatever. Um, one, two, three, four, five. He has six losses in the AFC title game. One Super Bowl win, six AFC title game losses. Yeah. Chiefs, Colts, Dolphins, Steelers, Steelers, Broncos. He was. I mean, and then he starts that TV career. Yeah. And he and Pat Summerall were – how many years did they work together as a team? I mean, they're, they're the soundtrack of my childhood. Like, I mean, I, you, you tell me NFL football, 1980s, I tell you Pat Summerall and John, John Madden. Thanksgiving Day games and – the big turkey leg and all that stuff. I mean, all, yeah, of, yeah, yeah. all of that stuff was just, I mean, for me, it's just drips with nostalgia. I mean, when I heard that he had passed, I mean, it was like, it kind of hit me yesterday mm-hmm. a little bit. Like, that's a big part of, as a kid, I mean, who watched Everybody the, knows those voices. Well, yeah, I mean. Madden I, and Summerall, Keith Jackson in college football. Well, I will drive down the road and listen to a Raiders broadcast so that I can listen to Brent Musburger. Yeah. And it's not because I care. It's because, for me – as a kid, and I used to say this all the time, it's true, when Phyllis George died, it kind of hit me in the feels. I kind of had a minute because when I was a kid, mm-hmm. we'd go to church and we'd. Co- I wanted to go to early church so yeah, that sure. I could go to Sunday school and then come home and yeah. I'd change. And by 1130, I could turn the TV on and there it would be, the NFL Today, Brent Musburger, you are looking live. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, that's when I knew, okay, hey, man, it's football. We're, here we go. Who are the Cowboys playing today so I can cheer against them? And <laughs> the Saints are on, damn it. I'm not going to get to see a good game because I get stuck with the Saints. 
but you had that over the course of the day and you had but you always looked forward to that national game with Musburger, not Musburger, but um Madden and and Sumrall. They were they mm-hmm. were just great and they went for I I guess decades? Yeah, forever. I mean his last call was um he was he announced his official retirement from the broadcasting booth on April 16, 2009. So his final game was the Super Bowl between the Cardinals and the Steelers. Mm, a pretty good game. Yeah. When did he start TV? Was it like 80, 84, 85? 79 immediately. Okay. Yeah. Well, here's what you're thinking, though. He worked – well, no, he worked for CBS from 79 to 93, Fox from 94 to 01, ABC from 02 to 05, the Monday Night Football stuff, mm. and then NBC from 06 to 08. Gotcha. And that finished him him up. Um. Just yeah, I, and he was great. I mean, you know, now people go back and go, well, you know, if you look, compare him to what they do, to, you know, today, he wasn't that good. That's not fair. Oh God, no. That's no. not fair. Don't do that. That's that's doing the era comparing thing yeah. that I can't stand. It drives yeah. me insane. You know. Larry Bird would struggle in today's NBA. Magic Johnson, they didn't play in today's NBA. They would have figured it out. Yeah, the odds are, no, they, they would have figured it out. But they didn't play in today's NBA. They played in the 80s NBA. That's when they played. And they dominated their sport. Well, Babe Ruth in today's, okay, yeah, but Babe Ruth didn't play in 2010s. He mm-hmm. played in the 1920s. Yeah. So that's stupid. I mean, you don't. No one goes, you know, I don't think Hank Aaron would be that good in today. Are you crazy? In the same way that you could take Ken Griffey Jr. and put him in the 20s and that dude would have dominated. He'd, because he'd, anybody who can swing a bat like that's going to hit. He'd hit a few bombs. He's going to hit. Yeah. Yeah, just it, Madden was great. Madden was one of the first people to make kind of football on TV fun. Mm-hmm. The telestrator stuff he would do and the boom and all that yeah. stuff. And, it, yeah, it was just and, – and, what what struck me yesterday was how many players who either played for him or played against him or whatever just really respected him. The guy loved the game in a way that, I mean, you want, you know, people talk about what do you want to do with your career or whatever. I mean, you know, ideally you, you do something with something that you love. He did. He coached and then found a way in broadcasting. Once you broadcast, you, if you're great at it, you love it because you yeah, never yeah. lose. Sure. Yeah, it's all good. Yeah, you just but you're he you're in a good mood when you leave every day. He was for him it was kind of an art. Yeah. People loved it, and then the whole Madden football thing and the whole deal. The people that do the one about the fantasy football when people get started on how that is because you own them. It's back to you simply don't want anyone to have any joy in anything they do. Yeah, you are you are now you are just searching. Carson has a fantasy basketball team. Mm-hmm. Shea Gildas Alexander is on his fantasy basketball team. He knows that he does not own Shea Gildas Alexander. He feels very confident in that. I mean, he he's well aware. Yes. I mean, just sometimes, man, people – and when people launch into that, on the day that someone dies, well, you know, shut up. Social media is such a terrible place. It's a terrible place. Yeah. The guy impacted so many lives in a positive way. Yeah. So many people in that sport, I mean, spanning generations, but certainly, like, take Peyton Manning, probably, for example, right? Peyton Manning grew up watching John Madden on TV. Mm-hmm. You don't think for a guy like Peyton Manning, the first time he met John Madden, he was like, oh, this is cool. John Madden's calling my game. Yeah. I'm visiting with John Madden the night before a game. You don't think that was cool for a guy like Peyton Manning? Yeah. I'm all in. Let's talk. Yeah. Yeah. Ronnie Lott, Joe Montana. I mean, the list goes on. Eli. Yeah, sure. You don't think the first time that Eli Manning is a rookie or second year quarterback, hey, John Madden's going to talk to you tonight. Okay. okay right, cool. so I'm in. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, probably like, hey, I, 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 Dad, I'm talking yeah, to yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's what's cool about it. So I don't know. The guy, uh, the guy had an incredible life. Mm hmm. 
A uh, quick thing here, no media ops today. We'll have more coverage because I've, I've just got one thing. Neil's got a mailbag, so more coming from a Rebel Grove standpoint, but uh, no interviews from New Orleans today. Those resume tomorrow with Baylor defense, Ole Miss offense, so they'll flip what uh, what happened yesterday. So just heads up on that. We'll be back with you tomorrow morning. So I hope all of you have a uh, a wonderful day. Stay in if, it's, uh, if you're in the Oxford area. still raining. I think it's storming most of the day today. Have a good one, and we'll talk to you again very soon.